Is the economy going to collapse? I mean, it's not an outlandish question when you're experiencing firsthand runaway inflation, rising interest rates, supply chain interruptions, growing corporate layoffs, with many more expected, and then there's Biden's newest tax hike proposal. Can you believe it? I mean, with the country hurting the way it is, raising taxes is the plan? However you look at it, you can't deny the economy is heading downward. And where's at the bottom is what we're all wondering. Will it completely collapse? Well, if it does, there's something you most definitely will want to do before it does. If you wait until after, it might be too late. You ready? Let's go. Hi, I'm Matt Terrio, CEO of Epic Real Estate, where we show people how to invest in real estate so they can escape the daily grind and retire early. Now, bigger fish to fry today than early retirement, though. I mean, if we don't have an economy, is retirement even possible? And if the economy were to collapse, there is something you want to do to save yourself. You want to do this before it does, and that's buy real estate. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if I just lost you with that statement, but I would be very sad if I did, because when an economy collapses, there's gonna be fallout. There are casualties, and I don't want that to be you. So if you don't want to be one of those casualties, it might be worth it to hang out until the end. Now, everyone knows the housing market is about to crash, right? I mean, that's what the masses are thinking for sure. And if it's a thought like that or something similar that has you thinking buying real estate right now is a foolish idea, It actually tells me a lot about you. It suggests to me that you're either living in the past, you are watching too much CNN, you don't understand how inflation or money printing works, nor are you aware of Biden's plans for the second half of his term, nor do you understand how the basic law of supply and demand work in an economy. And what I'm getting at is that there's so much more to the housing market right now than the simple cliche. You can't dismiss it with just what goes up must come down. With that said, I'll address the potential housing crash in just a minute, but let's look at why I'm suggesting to buy real estate now. First thing, real estate has proven itself as a sound hedge against inflation. You want to preserve your wealth as much as possible during these times, at the very least. And real estate over time has done just that for those who own it. Further, as inflation rises, so does the overall cost of living, including your shelter. This can be unwelcome news for tenants, yet the landlords benefit from this. And this doesn't make the landlord evil or greedy. No, they're they're not immune to higher food and gas prices. They're people too, with families to provide for. So if the market will support it, they will raise rents to pay their own rising costs. And that's another one of real estate's hedges against inflation, the income it produces. Second thing, interest rates are still historically low. You know, we've been spoiled for a while. But despite the recent hikes, the interest rates are still very favorable for investors, and they could rise even further and still have minimal impact on investor returns. And here's why. You see, it's a very rare occurrence when the CPI is higher than the mortgage rates. As of the recording of this video, the last consumer price index, the index we use to monitor inflation, that number sits at 8.3%. Well, today's mortgage rate for a 30-year fixed loan is 5.8%, of which equates to a net negative 2.5% to borrow money, meaning the effective mortgage interest rate to you right now is negative 2.5%, not the 5.8% we see on the bank's website. And it gets even better, and I'm gonna show you how in a minute. But the big result here is, regardless of the recent increase in mortgage rates, the bank is still paying us to borrow their money to buy our assets. And it works like this. You see, inflation causes wages and business revenue to increase. If you've borrowed money before that inflation occurred, you benefit from the inflation. You see, by locking in long-term fixed rate real estate loans, over time, inflation will cause that debt to be easier to manage. Because you see, you will still owe the same amount of money. That number is fixed, it's not gonna change. You owe the same amount of money, but now you're gonna have more money in your paycheck to pay it off. Simply put, cash now is worth more than cash later. Inflation lets you pay your lenders back with money that's worth less than it was when you originally borrowed it. My good friend Jason Hartman calls this inflation-induced debt destruction. And it's something the wise and the wealthy investors, they, they understand and they take advantage of this every chance that they can get. And that time is right now. Now, the third thing, taxes. I know, 
Taxes are boring. No one wants to talk about taxes. But right now on the table, Biden has proposed six new tax hikes and they're significant. And don't be fooled when they say that they are taxes just for the wealthiest Americans. Not true. You see, when you actually read the proposal, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see the trickle down and indirect impact on every American. Plus the proposed repeals of the step up basis and the 1031 exchange will directly impact the majority. But that's not what this is about. You see, if prices are rising, interest rates are rising and taxes are about to follow suit, you want to hold real estate for its tax benefits. You see, it's one of the last real tax shelters for the average person. And there are three ways that you benefit. The mortgage interest deduction is a good place to start. You see the interest that you pay on your real estate loan, it's deductible. So if you're paying say $1,000 per month in interest, you know, most people are effectively only paying $600 a month as the remaining $400 is a tax deduction. And then when you factor in the inflation induced debt destruction that I spoke of earlier, you're being paid even more now to borrow money because of the tax benefit. Also, the IRS allows you a tax write-off against the normal wear and tear on your property. This is called depreciation. And with a smart CPA, one can virtually eliminate their tax liability after owning just a few properties. It can be that easy. And Uncle Sam recognizes landlords as business owners too thereby granting them all of the same tax deductions business owners benefit from. You know, like deducting your cell phone bill, your internet access, your home office, office supplies, and I mean, there's so much more. See, the, the benefits of owning real estate are becoming more and more commonly known, but is it really a good time to buy now? Shouldn't you wait until the prices crash? If we knew for sure that the market was going to crash and we knew when it was, then yes, I'd say wait but we don't know the answer to either of those questions. Nobody does. But there is evidence in the market that a crash is inevitable, right? I mean, we're already seeing a little bit of a slowdown in sales. That's what the media is sharing. But what they're not sharing is that it's slowing down primarily because the lack of choices for home buyers. Per the latest report, we're sitting at a paltry 2.2 month supply of inventory. And low inventory like this is not a precondition of a crashing market. The opposite, actually. I mean, we may see a little pullback in prices, but it will be an artificial pullback if we do. You see, it'll be due to the Fed's monetary policy. And if they do take a more drastic measure that causes a market correction, it's gonna be a short-lived one. Because the core fundamentals of supply and demand that drive prices for anything, it's just way too lopsided in favor of further appreciating home prices. You see, with such low inventory right now, and new home builders, they're, they're completely losing confidence in building new houses. It'll be some time before the market recovers from its extended periods of underbuilding. The supply of homes for sale won't recover for a while. It's gonna take more than a decade per some experts' projections. Now on the other side of the equation, the demand is enough to fuel the market for as long as you and I are walking this earth. You know, in a nutshell, we have more people than houses. We're not so much in a housing bubble as we are in a people bubble. But we are indeed seeing a market slowdown. Yes, and that's not the whole story. Sales activity indeed slowed last month, but the median price reached a new all-time high again. Further, the number of all cash purchases increased as well. Rising inflation and mortgage rates have not yet been enough to kill the demand for real estate, but rather they have increased the demand, particularly when it comes to the wise and the wealthy. They know us up and they're buying. All right, final thought. Let's say all hell breaks loose and the economy completely collapses. Say something like the Soviet Union did in 1991. Well, if that were to happen, a housing crash probably wouldn't be our first concern. Survival would certainly be top priority. And if you look back and dig into the stories of Russia's citizens during the fall of the Soviet Union, you're gonna discover that the ones that fared best were business owners of essential services and owners of real estate. The basic employee who owned nothing suffered the most. Real estate has produced more wealth during the best of times, and it has preserved more wealth during the worst of times. Don't wait to buy real estate. Buy real estate and wait. What are your thoughts? Is the economy going to collapse? Do you have a better idea than owning real estate if it does? Let me know in the comments below, I wanna know. And who else do you know that needs to see this? When their name comes to mind, please share it with them. Oh, and if you're already subscribed, I pulled this video out special for you to watch next. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Take care.